Hello, 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 everybody. Hello, hello. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Thursday edition of Hot Takes. Here we go, baby. Getting ready for the weekend. It is July 27th, 2023. We're almost to August. We're like eight days, nine days from my birthday. I'm going to be... 38 years old. Can y'all believe that? It's actually funny because uh, a lot of people think I'm younger than I actually am. For instance, the guy with um, that gave me the pepper plants, the listener that gave me the, the pepper plants, and he's like, I'm, I'm so excited to see a young young guy uh, getting into to, you know growing things, into, into gardening and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not really a young guy. I mean, I'm like almost in my 40s, which is weird. Because I have the personality and the sense of humor of a 16-year-old. So I think that's where my growth stopped. But that's neither here nor there. Since I'm talking about the peppers, the one thing that you guys are wanting to see, probably the one reason you're here on this podcast, because you want to see John Bird eat the ghost pepper I brought him today. I'm going to let you see that in just a moment. First, let me tell you about my boys and girls over at Vapor Forge out on 280. Oh, look at my sign, baby. Vapor Forge on 280. There's all the info. Take a screenshot. Boom. 8749010. Tony, Amy, the rest of the crew doing big things down there. They got everything you need for the best price, best selection. And they got that Delta 8, bro. You tried that Delta 8? Mm, it's so good. Trish gets stressed out. I pop one of them gummies in her mouth. She is Gucci. I actually did that yesterday. She was like all stressed out from work. Popped her a D8 and she was good. She was good. So, uh, John Bird, who is an absolute team player. Absolute team player agreed, before I even knew how hot these peppers were going to be, agreed to eat one of these peppers. The original plan was I'm going to bring one ghost pepper, one Carolina Reaper pepper, and he's going to try both of them. Didn't expect him to eat the whole thing, but just, you know, going to see what we can get out of him. Well, last night, for the first time, I, I picked the peppers, those that were ready, and uh, I tried the ghost pepper. I was going to try the ghost pepper, then I was going to try the Reaper. Well, I try the ghost pepper, and it is um, give or take five times hotter than I anticipated because it was apparently the peach variety. There's these, all these different strains and different different peppers. And so all the pepper experts were like, oh, yeah, the peach version is uh, not as hot, but it's got a better flavor. And so when I tried it, I'm like, no, that's just as hot. That's really hot. So I didn't even try the Carolina Reaper. And for me, that's a big deal. So I said, you know, I'm not even going to take the Reaper to work because I know John Bird's the type of person that would probably eat it anyway against his better judgment for the sake of the show. I just took what was left of the ghost pepper, okay? So I take that to good old John Bird, and again, the team player that he is... He doesn't think twice. Now, as you see in this video, he's a little nervous. This is from our Facebook Live earlier today. And uh, he's opening the pepper for the first time. You see how he looks up and he looks down? Because <laughs> he's not sure. He's not sure exactly why he's doing this. Once these came to fruition, the first thing I said is i got to get somebody at work to try them out. Now, we knew that AJ would not do it. <laughs> Now, for those of you listening to the audio side, I apologize. You need to go to the YouTube channel and watch yes. for this part. Now that we're here, I want you to open the bag and just, you know, you turn your mic on. Yeah, and you can leave your mic on. As and another problem is, is when he's talking to me, it cuts cute. the microphone off yeah, in the production is. studio. So it kind of goes back and forth. But you get the picture. <laughs> 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 
is burning my throat. It's already burning my throat. It, it, it's got a good it's got a good smell to it, but you can tell there's danger behind it. <laughs> the smell of danger. Or you do not touch your face. You can you just wipe your nose. As soon Crap. as you said that, you would... Crap. What is wrong with me? This is a, a battle that we had the entire the entire time was John Bird continuing to touch his face. Even well after the eating of the pepper was over, he still went back to touch his face. He touched his eyes. He he, he literally touched everything except for his private parts uh, after handling that pepper, which is always, always a no-no. You don't do that. So here we go. I'm a man of my word. I gave my word there. <laughs> there are millions of people out there listening and watching. And we know John Bird's a team player. Once he's in it. What would happen if I did at once just to get it over with? Okay, all right. All right okay, here's the first one. He bite. wiped his face again. That's a little to you. Hesitant. He's not putting it in his mouth yet, and uh, he's, he's almost waking. Don't do that. Ah! Oh, God! How is it? Listen, listen. Oh, he's already drinking the milk. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't drink the milk that quick, John Bird. Oh, he's going straight for the ice cream. I can't do this. <laughs> He's already tapping. Okay. Without drinking milk or eating ice cream. It hurts so bad. <laughs> it's just a matter of seconds. And he goes again. He's a madman. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling y'all, that pepper is hot. God! It's horrible! <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell. It's just it's just poison and heat and evil. <coughs> no. I think that means a color. <laughs> Oh God. Okay. This decided to take a different route. It's up in my sinuses now. Listen to the pitch in his my, voice. Uh, epiglottis, the little dangly thing. Maybe bleeding. I'm not sure. But it hasn't worked its way completely down my throat. This is what's crazy is his voice went up a few octaves. Which could be very dangerous for John Bird plays the guitar tomorrow. Oh, man. Boy, I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch some heat if John Bird can't <laughs> sing tomorrow. My... Did, did I break the record? <laughs> He's shaking. And by the way, notice this milk. This is like green lid milk, which is 2% uh, fattened milk or whatever. It, disgusting. He might as well have gotten buttermilk. That's gross. Why would I drink one more drink? It hurts. Another thing, can we can we note this real quick? I want y'all to look at what he's using to uh, eat the ice cream. All right, hold on, let me find it. Do you see this? It is a giant fork he's using to eat the ice cream that he found in the break room. No telling who it belongs to, but look at this. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Again, I apologize to those of you that are listening to the audio podcast, but you've got to go to andrewmcleanwho.com 
and uh, watch the video. Oh, no, I mean. <laughs> and this is uh, this is where he goes to the trash can. Oh no! God, help me! <laughs> You're doing good, buddy. You're doing great. My eyes are turning up. Keep the microphone on. You're doing really uh, uh, Andrew, please don't make me do it. Okay. You don't, how much ice cream you got left? I got a lot. So, so you, I mean, okay, I'm not going to say He's breathing so heavily. This is the worst I've ever experienced. Congratulations. That's a good pepper. Um, God. <laughs> I can't. I'm crying, and it's not eyes watering. I'm crying from pain. You know what? I fully expected uh, for the bosses to come in after this segment and tell me never to do this again and how dangerous it was, but uh, I didn't get any of that today, which was uh, a positive. I forgot to bring a spoon from home. <laughs> Oh my God! I didn't think about that. Okay, my lips now. I it, I didn't. I was careful not to get it in my lips, and now it's on my lips. And I just knew he was gonna sick for, get sick from drinking all that milk. I just knew he was. Yes, it's two percent milk fat. Damn. <laughs> he's, this is he's like shaking. Oh my. Dude, this won't go away. Okay. That is incredibly awkward, John Byrne. It's in my throat. I have to, let's say. You can hear me laughing in the background. <laughs> You're mean. I know I'm. Yes, you did. Dude, I mean, I, you've got the magic touch when it comes to brutal peppers. <laughs> oh, my God. I actually do feel bad for him now that I'm watching this side of it. It didn't look as bad on the other side of the glass. It's the live with Andrew Dude, I'm serious. I've never I've never had anything hot. <laughs> Don't forget you got Facebook over there, too. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you. It still hurts really bad. And y'all see how supportive I am even during the breaks? I do such a good job of coaching him up. Now, here's where it got worse. You thought that was bad. It goes downhill because after the break... He gets a wild hair and decides that he wants to take one more bite of the pepper. And, and I don't know what possessed him to do this because I, I don't, I mean, I don't think I asked him to do it. I think I did originally. And then I was like, nah, you don't really have to. And he goes back to this whole I'm a man of my word thing and goes for the third bite. And this third bite was bigger than all of them put together. I just feel like I, I don't want to leave it on the table. Yeah. I, I don't want to be known as a failure. No, you don't, don't want to do that. You, you need to make sure that uh, you give your all. And everything you do, give your all. So. Okay. Oh, it makes all me right. nervous just to relive this. Everybody on Facebook Live to say, no, no, no. Okay. That's what I wanted to hear. Oh, sour cream would have been. And 
Here we go. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, that was as bad as I remember. He spit the peppers across the studio. I was stupid. Mm. Well, you had about out of ice cream, Cole. Man, my eyes are burning just watching this. <laughs> See, oh, excuse me. When I took the bite, it slipped to the back of my throat. So it was like painted the whole back of my throat. In other words, I'm going to have to throw up after the show. Mm. Okay. And it all went downhill from there, as you can imagine. He was, however, able to finish out the show, but uh, he was in bad shape. Now, I know what many of you were thinking right now as you're watching this. You're like, Andrew, you should eat one of those peppers on the podcast. Um... Well, I'm not. Um, I, I, let me say, I will eat them. I'm just, I don't have them with me. And plus, by the time you're watching this, I've already been, I'm already out of the studio. So, that's the way that works. But that's John Bird Eats the Pepper before John Bird plays the guitar. Uh, you can watch that video in its entirety on the 99.5 Facebook page. I think what we're going to do is we are going to upload that video to our YouTube channel, maybe even have it on andrewmcclainwho.com. But if you're listening to this, you got to uh, you got to go to our YouTube channel. You need to subscribe. Just search over the line Andrew McClain, and it'll pull up. It's got all of our interviews, our hot takes, everything else. So, with that said, one of the main things I wanted to talk about tonight was something I came across and hat tip to. Um, Lummy from Bubba's show, they played this on their show this morning, and I had no idea this was a thing. It was from something called the PBD Podcast, and I have no idea what the PBD Podcast is or what it stands for. I hope it's nothing nasty, but this is a podcast where they have some fairly famous people come on, and this this episode in particular, which I think was like seven days ago, was an interview with Anthony Weiner. Now, you guys remember Anthony Weiner, his real scumbag, pervert, pedophile, uh, was Huma Abedin's uh, husband. Huma Abedin was Hillary Clinton's right-hand woman. Uh, her Hillary Clinton's classified emails ended up on Anthony, Anthony Weiner's laptop with the, the CP and all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to not get booted off YouTube here. I'm trying to be good. And um, anyway, he's made a resurgence. Apparently, he's on a radio station in New York. And this podcast <laughs> devolved into chaos. But before I get into that part, I want to just play how this started as Anthony Weiner kind of explains what he's doing these days. Listen. For the audience who doesn't know who Anthony Weiner is, I want to kind of give a, a, an intro because your show, you got a show going on right now called The Middle with Anthony Weiner. And there was a time that everybody and anybody right, saw let's, you. But give me a little bit more. Were, give it a little more oxygen. I'm on 77 WABC Radio in New York, okay. 50,000 watts, clear channel, powerful AM radio, but a very different model than this. We just okay, do. give it to us again. You're in 77 it's, markets. It, it, no, no, 770. You see, so this is AM terrestrial radio, which might be mysterious to some of your audience. Like it's still old school, 
terrestrial radio. It is the iconic, WABC is the iconic radio station, been around for about 100 years. Okay, so he's on AM radio, nothing against AM radio, that's where I got my start, but he's talking like he's a bigwig, he's at a 50,000 watt AM radio station. The station we're on, Talk 99.5, is a 100,000 watt station, so, you know. Granted, it's in New York, which is one of, if not the biggest market in the country, uh, but obviously their options were few and far between because, as you see, they hired Anthony Weiner. A lot of different things. And recently a guy named John Katsimatidis, you know that name at all? No. He is started out in supermarkets in New York, then went into oil, and now he's a billionaire. And so he bought the station off the scrap heap. And, but it's terrestrial radio. It's not. It's old-fashioned, over the air. You know, people stream it and everything else, but the podcast part of it is an offshoot we have it but it's really old-fashioned calls and that, you know calls and that kind of thing so we do that and then also we have like some podcast stuff but i gotta tell it, you man i i uh, remember every other uh, second we turn on the tv was a story about you every day you were on it was mathematically impossible long to time ago you. though brother Long time ago, but the audience who doesn't know needs to kind of know. So let me kind of uh, properly introduce you. Anthony David Weiner uh, is an American uh, former politician who served at the, as the U.S. representative for New York's 9th Congressional District from 1999 to his resignation in 2011. A member of the Democratic Party consistently carried the district with at least 60% of the vote. Uh, Weiner resigned from Congress June of 20, 2011 after it was revealed. Uh, he sent sexually suggestive uh, photos of himself to different women. A two-time candidate for mayor of New York City, Weiner finished second in Democratic uh, primary in 2005. A lot of people wanted you to actually become the mayor, and it, it was uh, uh, super close. Ran again in 2013, placed fifth in Democratic primary. In 2017, you pleaded guilty for transferring obscene material to a minor and was sentenced to 21 months in prison. He was also required to permanently register as a sex offender. Weiner began serving his federal prison sentence. The same year was released in 2019, and now you have a radio show with uh, 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 The Middle with uh, Anthony Weiner, and it's available on iTunes. You can follow him on Twitter, uh, which is what? Rep Weiner, if I'm saying it correctly. And you also got a yeah, yeah, YouTube yeah. channel called Ask Anthony Weiner. We can put yeah, all that, that stuff that, below. That's all, yeah, that's kind of dated, that stuff. So I got to tell you, I watched your... Uh, 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 <laughs> He's like, uh, yeah, yeah all, all that stuff's dated. Uh, you know, all the, the sending explicit material to children and all that. That's that's kind of that's kind of old stuff. But this is what's fascinating. Again, I still don't know anything about this podcast, but this host has got this underhanded, backhanded way of getting under these people's skin and questioning them about things that maybe they said beforehand they weren't going to talk about. One of which would be his relationship with Hillary Clinton via Huma Abedin. And he starts asking these questions in a way of, you know, people say or people wanted me to ask. And it was absolutely brilliant hosting. Period. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I, I want to pull up a couple articles here for you. But you know what? Before doing that, I just want to get to my last point here. So um, you were very uh, uh, eloquent on the way you defended Hillary Clinton on who she was when it comes down to politics. Are you still close to that family? I'm not. Okay. So who do you think between the two was a better politician? You think he was told he, he, can't, he can't say that he's close to the, the Clintons anymore? They're like, don't you dare speak our name again. You think Bill's the better politician? Do you think Hillary's the better politician? I don't politician? think Hillary was a particularly good politician. Okay, so she's a better strategist, you would say. No, he's got to act like they're not friends anymore, so he's got to say, no, nah, she's, not, she's not very good at politics. She's more uh, strategic, she's, she's power. A, she, is, she is a classic blooming where she's potted kind of public official. Yeah. Everything that she has been given to do. I watched her, you know, as a as a rookie elected official come into New York and become an amazing senator. I watched her at at, at Secretary of State be like just she blooms where she's potted. She would have she knows government well. She's smart as a very very smart person. Yeah. But I can tell you that that it's hard 
it, 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 I think it was hard for her to get her sea legs, being the first woman a candidate of a major party. I think it was hard for her to get her sea legs in the, in the, in the framing of Bill Clinton's wife. I think it was, it was a lot of things for her. A lot of challenge she faced that you and I would not face on the campaign. Do you think show. she's a good person? I do. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know... Well, yeah, you better say that. You better, you better say, as a person, yeah, 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 she's good. When we you know, announced the fact that we're interviewing you, we, we, we kind of crowdsource with the audience what questions do you want to ask and then our research team will go and say hey is there any credibility to this or not and then we don't sure. waste our time so hey we're having anthony weiner on great so you have to ask him about uh uh frazzle drip go now this is where it gets good this is where this guy says oh yeah we we you know we don't buy into conspiracy theories but these are what this is these are the questions people were telling us we needed to ask you <laughs> Fake, no, no, to any credibility to it on what happened with you know Hillary Clinton, whom on all this stuff? Nope, we're not going to ask him about that because I don't yet see a real source. A lot of it was stuff that you know conspiracy, all the stuff that's being said. We're not going there. Yeah, you need to ask him about PizzaGate. Because oh, ho, 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 ho. you need to ask him about PizzaGate because that's exactly what's going on with kids. Yeah, no, we're not going there. That's not something we're going to be asking him about. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Well, so, what do you think about PizzaGate? Uh, yeah, you need to ask him about this, and you need to ask him about this. I said, okay. All of these things that they said we have to ask you about. To be fair, it's uh, Bill Clinton officiated your wedding with Huma, your wife, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So you've been very close, and your wife, is it still wife or is it ex-wife? I think it's separated since 2017, we're, right? We're, we're separated. We, we, we co-parent Jordan, but we're separated. Okay. Separated uh, from his marriage of convenience, just like Bill and Hillary Clinton. And, you know, she was a right-hand person to Hillary Clinton in 2016 while the scandal was taking place. For years so, before that, she's, yeah. she was with Hillary for she's 25, 20 years. And, and the whole thing with the life insurance, you know, the, the email, 650,000, the uh, one folder with the word life insurance and the files that are in there. So the next thing that, that people said, you, ought, you got to ask him. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Where are you going with this, buddy? It's the following. So, hey, you know, Rob, if you can pull up this story, I'm like, I'm not going to uh, buy into this one. Well, nine out of 12 cops, NYPD, who saw the email and saw what was in that laptop, you know, committed suicide. And it was... You know, seven of them since June, and it was the most ever that this took place. And these are the men that committed suicide. So then we went and looked it up, and we're like, no, uh, uh, they did commit suicide, but it wasn't linked directly to seeing the laptop or the intel there. No problem. So again, no credibility there. So there's no reason to ask you the question about the nine out of 12 cops that saw it in NYPD. <laughs> He's going into great detail. You see, you remember that story, though. The, the the graphic nature of the stuff that was on Anthony Weiner's laptop was so bad that nine of the 12 officers that were involved in that ended up committing suicide just co coincidentally you know they just they just all happened to be super depressed and and they uh you know, they off themselves. He's like, oh, no, we're not going to ask you about that because it doesn't have any credibility. And Anthony Weiner starts to get so uncomfortable. Be listing them and giving it oxygen. No, no my job ahead. is to listen because I like to no, read. No, list them. You shouldn't be listing these yeah, yeah. things. Well, these things it, it are is what it is. destructive it's, people have these actually are, these had are conspiracy theories. These, these are conspiracy Correct. theories that All some that have people, books about them, though, right. I wouldn't But the one thing that, that we did look up. That oh, he's so mad right now. It wasn't a conspiracy theory. was the following. And th this is the one that's kind of weird. And, and first thing I ask myself is, how the hell uh, is our, our guy here, Anthony Weiner, still alive? What do you mean by that? Well, when you go through the list of people that have been close to Hillary Clinton and the Clintons and the Deadpool, this is not a conspiracy. You got the names of James McDougal. Oh, here we go. We're going with the... Clinton body count, baby. Okay, Clinton's convicted Whitewater partner died of an apparent heart attack. You know, Mary Mahoney, a former White House intern, was murdered July 1997 at a Starbucks coffee shop in Georgetown. Ron Brown, he died in a, car, in Foster, a plane crash. Vince Foster. Is, was, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did we not do this just the other day? Did, what, was it uh, Tuesday's Hot Takes episode? Didn't I go through the Clinton body count, at least a part of it? <laughs> That's why when I saw this, I was like, holy crap.
They got Anthony Weiner face to face reading off the Clinton well, body Vince, count. Vince Foster was the next one. He, by the way, the, the James Dougal was a key witness in a, a key Ken Starr Ron investigation. Ron Brown was in a plane crash. Why is he on the list? Ron Brown is another one, but there was a close person to this. Victor Razor. You got Paul Tooley, Ed Woolley. Wait a minute. You're, you're reading a list of people that Bill and Hillary Clinton I'm knew. You, they're 80, well, they're 70 but wait a something minute. years old. I'm asking you this question. Die. I'm asking you this question and an answer at the end. So you got Jerry Parks, Jane Bunch, James oh, Wilson, you're Kathy better. Ferguson, you're, Bill Shelton, Candy Bow, Florence Powell. Martin, Susan Coleman, Paula Grober, Danny uh, Casolero, Paula Wilker, John uh, Parnell Walker, Barbara Weiss. We should verify this yourself because you're, you're running a radio show. You should look it up. <laughs> Yeah, that's a long list, cuz he. I don't Charles know Meisner, any of these Dr. names. Dr. Stanley Heard, Barry Beal, Barry Seal, Here, can, Johnny Longhorn, Stanley Higgins. Can you read me the URL Higgins, you're reading? Can you read me the URL Herschel, you're reading? We'll send you the most credible no, no, source you can look it up. Know Herschel what Friday. What we will. We'll put the up. link below. We'll put the Just link below. Just tell me so I know what Herschel I'm responding Friday, to. Herschel Friday, Kevin Ivey, Dan Henry, Keith Coney. <laughs> and these were uh, 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 part of the Ivy Henry case. Keith McCaskill. What's the Ivy Henry case? Uh, you can look it up. Ivy Henry case. So... Gregory Collins, Jeff Rhodes, James Milland, Richard Winter, and then you got the close bodyguards, Major Kemsick, William Barkley, Captain Scott Reynolds. Look at all those bodyguards. I mean, think about this. This is a point we tried to make earlier this week when it comes to the, uh, the chef. Who are the closest people with these power players in their most intimate settings? Chefs, you know, housekeepers. Bodyguards, who's most likely to hear their deepest, darkest secrets? That's right. Those exact people. Hanley, Tim Sable, what General you, William Robertson. You don't Robertson, even know what you're reading a list of. How is this, how is this Robert helpful? Robert Kelly, Colonel uh, Gary Rhodes, uh, uh, right. Steve Wills. <laughs> he says, how is this helpful? It's Robert Williams, Conway LeBlu, Todd a, McKeon. I'm done. In the show? It's 46 names. And... Of what? When Can you I, read me I, the list? Can you I, read me the URL so I, I know what you read a list uh, uh, of? Uh, when I, I finish, when I finish this, when I finish this, stillinthestorm.com. You can look it up. Stillinthestorm.com. You can this look it up. This is your big moment, guys. Yeah. So you you can go. And by the way, Ed, Ed, I love this guy. I don't know who he is. I don't even know what his name is, Mister PBD Podcast. But this dude is a boss. It's about chemtrails by, at the by, end of by, it. He hasn't even asked the question. By the way, he's just reading the article. He's reading. No, he's reading a list of names. So he hasn't even. That's the question. It's a list. The fact He's, that you're getting nervous is an answer. It's not okay? nervous. I just this stuff Let makes me, me sick it. when you repeat exactly. these ridiculous. Exactly, makes us sick as well. It also it makes us sick. Doesn't. It of course, obviously doesn't. Because doesn't. the establishment makes you us sick. You start the question by reading a list of well Your reaction is an answer. Conspir- I gotta say, if you are a radio show host, and I think we all collectively know this, if you're a radio show host, the last thing you want to do is to be called out and confronted on things that you've been lying about. It's really hard. It's really hard to get by in radio and lie because there's people out there. There's a portion of the audience out there that's waiting for you to say untruths so they can then call you out on it. They they live for that stuff. That's why people hate listen. They're waiting for you to say something they can easily disprove. And if you do that, if that happens to you on a regular basis, you normally don't survive in the radio business. So who knows? Maybe Anthony Weiner might not be around in radio much longer. I know these things make me sick and people got killed. Your reaction is an answer. Someone went into a pizza yes. parlor in Washington because they believe this shit and your, you're making an echo chamber. Your reaction is an answer. So let me go to it here now. No, no, so, no, no, so no, 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 no. Your reaction You're not gonna is read an a answer. List. Yeah, my reaction is my reaction. Yeah, exactly. Can you tell me what that list, in your view... You what, haven't allowed me to finish. If you allow me yeah, to finish the you're question, 46 then you can do off the inter- whatever of, of, you want. Of some fucking insane mm. website. I love your answer. And these people, that, And these people who you don't even know who they are, you're reading them on a list of something, making some kind of incriminating, as if it's somehow suspicious. Did he almost say incriminating? <laughs> it's an incriminating list? Do you know what that means? Because you don't even know who these human beings are, who have families, who are like out there, and now you're reading- I'll spend the next two hours with you, one by one by one, explaining who you should as individuals are if you want to do fine. that. How about you pick one? Pick one and tell me who he was and what his story was. Uh, no, 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 not you. You were asking me the question. Pick one name I and will. then tell me. Pull up Vince Foster if you want. Not go, Vince go. Foster. That suicide has been investigated 50 times. Pull yeah. up those, some, one of the obscure names you pulled. Yeah, you, Why did you pull Ron Brown? Here, let me read Ron Brown. Ron Brown, a commerce secretary who, who, who a plane crash while he was on a humanitarian mission crashed in the side of a mountain. So what do you want to know about Ron Brown? 
What do you want to know about Ron Brown? Can, can you let me ask the question? No, I, I, listen, this Wait, is a conversation. You, no, no, no. We're having a conversation. I'm sorry. I'm the host. You invite yeah. me to your podcast. You get to ask the question. I'm, I'm, I'm the host. Listen, well, you, well, so, I'm going to ask you the question. You haven't I, let I, me answer I, the question. I, I didn't see Your reaction is already an answer. I know. I am infuriated by people I who drag other people's why you name would be. who are powerless. I, You're not powerless. Hillary Clinton is I'm powerless? Not, no, these people. Hillary Clinton these is powerless. These people. That's the problem. These people. Hillary's the problem. You had a list of people because you have the power to do it. People who do that are bullies, and I don't appreciate bullies. I have the power to do what? You do. To read to a list what? of some strangers' names. I have the power to names. use the DOJ and other things to control That's and hide That's not things. DOJ. Yeah. DOJ me, didn't make this let list. Let me finish up some my question. Some jackass made a list in his basement. You have the right You're to reading answer. their names as if they're incriminating you in some way. You have the right to That's answer. That's bullying, and you I don't have, And I, I stand the, up against bullies. Please do so. He hasn't You're, even asked the question yet, He's Anthony. reading a list, and he's refused. And now he says, let's move on. No, no. Because I set your answer Nobody already. has said move on. He hasn't even asked the question. I don't even know what the question is. Pick a name. I'm going to ask you a question. Reading a, and you get a to list answer of people who or probably, not answer. And there are some of those people that had military. I, I got to be honest. Uh, it's like these guys, these look like some tough dudes, like mafia guys. If I was Anthony Weiner, I would start to be a little careful in how you're speaking to these people. I, that's just me. <laughs> but these look like some tough dudes, so I would just tread lightly. Anyway, that was fascinating, and I wanted you guys to see a couple clips of that. I haven't watched the whole thing, but I'm going to go further into it. And if there's more there, uh, I'll bring it to you. I'll bring it to you right here on Hot Takes. Uh, I'm going to be following that podcast for sure because that was absolutely amazing. I love that stuff. <laughs> I love that so much. Not only that, but Anthony Weiner is an absolute pedo scumbag from the pits of hell. So anytime he can get put in his place, I'm all for it. I'm out of here. Thank you all for checking us out. Share, like, comment. Until next time, see you, cuz. Yeah.